K2D is a real-time Kubernetes API translator for the edge, right? but without having to have Kubernetes installed. And how does this work? Well, here you have a generic, nice overview of the architecture, but going a little bit down here, and I invite you to visit our, the page of the project a2d.io. Down here, we see three little boxes that define quite well what A2D does. So the first one, Kubernetes without Kubernetes. It's, it's quite crazy, right? If you think of it, but what K2D does, it basically does this translation, as you see here in the transparent translator box of the Kubernetes API into Docker or Podman. So this allows you to run a Kubernetes deployment on very small devices or machines. Typically to run Kubernetes on an IoT device, you need something which in the IoT, let's say industry is considered quite powerful, like two CPU, two gigs of RAM. I mean, that's, that is not a small device in the IoT world. I'm talking about one CPU with 700 megahertz. It's the example we put here to, to start with and a half a gig of RAM, the upstream Kubernetes it won't even run. You don't have two cores and two gigs of RAM. So here we enable you to use and to deploy Kubernetes YAML manifests, Helm charts in very small devices that are of oh, those that support Docker, obviously, or Pod. Okay, so let me show you how this works. Let me log into my Raspberry Pi here. I'm running a Raspberry Pi 4. Your name minus A, there it is. Let me expand this a bit. See, it's a ARM64 architecture running Raspbian as it is a Raspberry Pi 4, four cores and four gigs of RAM. That's, that's quite good. So obviously slightly over the minimum requirement, but still, I mean, it's, it's a small device, right? And the first thing I need to do is to retrieve some parameters to be able to deploy A2D. Let's go into the documentation page of A2D in the quick start to see what I'm talking about. Let's start with the prereqs. The prereqs are Docker or Podman on these versions or, or higher. Kubectl, Helm is optional, and these are the minimum hardware requirements. We have here the deployment method for Docker and for Podman. Now there are two variables that are very important. The first one is the K2D advertise address. And that will be the IP address of the host where you want A2D to run on. And also the K2D secret. Okay. The K2D secret, if you don't want to set your own, it's fine. Cause K2D, when you deploy it, will do that for you, but you definitely need minimum your host IP to be able to deploy A2D properly. Otherwise it's not going to run. I'm using Docker. I copied this here. And the IP address that I'm going to use is the one from my wireless interface. A show WLAN one. This is it. One and two, one, six, eight, zero, one, six, two. As it is here, I room. If you, if we check again, the documentation, there's this line here that I mentioned, which is the secret, but I remove that because I'm going to let pay to D generate that for me. And I'm going to run this right now on my machine running Docker. There it is. It's retrieving the image. Um, it's quite small, very fast, very performant. It started, will start soon. There it is. It started the container. Yes, there it is. Let's check the logs A to D here. And you see what it does after it deploys the container, it, um, generates the certificates that you need to be able to interface what with the, um, API. And once this, this is done, I'll be able to run kubectl or Helm on this device, but without having Kubernetes deployed. The last line of the log shows how to retrieve the kube config to be able to interface with K2D here. So let me copy this and show you the kube config that is generated. Here it is. I'm going to store this in my Kubernetes config file here under my dot cube folder. 
the standard for a cuddle. Okay, and now let's run cube cuddle get nodes. And there it is. Quite cool, eh? Cube cuddle get namespaces. There it is. K2D and the default, well known default, Kubernetes namespace. Upper PS, it's just, there it is. Kubernetes, actually, K2D doing the translation of the Kubernetes API on Docker. Right, now let's try running something here. Let's try deploying a manifest. Let's get an example here from a documentation page. I'm going to get the first example. It's a very well known use case, which is Node Red. Here's the manifest. It's a Kubernetes manifest contained with the creation of the namespace, the deployment, the storage, and it's going to be published. In, and in this case, it's using port 1880, which is the standard for node red. Let me copy here the command to run deployment of node red on this machine using K2D. Okay. So naturally what it is usually do when you're running Kubernetes, you do kubectl, get pods, the name of the namespace, node red, and you're going to say, oh, wow, it's already up and running. It's quite impressive. Let me do a Docker PS. And then the Docker, yes, what it's actually doing, it's running node red under the Docker instance, but K2D is doing that translation. So you can interact with this same container using the you cut out command line or the Kubernetes API interface. Unimpressive. And now let's see if this is actually up and running. There it is, port 1880. K2D is deployed using the host network on Docker. This enables me to very easily access anything that I deploy. There it is, the host network. Now, let me get the IP address here. See if Node Red is running. Paste or zero. And there you go. Right. Node Red running on Docker, but deployed using a Kubernetes YAML manifest. Amazing. Amazing. So I invite you to visit our website here for this project, k2d.io. Play around. Deploy it, send us your feedback. If you've hidden to any issues or suggestions that you want to make, feel free to do so in our GitHub uh, repository page here under issues. More than welcome. So your feedback is very important for us. And I hope you like this video. Thank you very much.